Art in a public school is not art in a studio. Art in a studio, you come in, you've got your idea, and you create. And there are some people who approach art education that way, that they see art as this unique bubble kind of outside of the school. But we need to understand that art in the public school system is one of several subjects the students are taking. We also need to recognize that only two to 3% of students will go on to an art-related career, but you need to teach the other 97, 98%. So art education in a public school, school system is different than teaching an atelier. So I feel like our art departments need to be doing two important things. And that is that they create uh, art projects that connect to the student's way of life and their experiences or point of view so that it's personal. So we need to be doing that in our art departments. But we also need to make sure that we are connected to core content to reinforce the learning and understanding students are getting in their other classes. And there are going to be some immediate connections that we can make and they don't take time out of your regular day and you might be doing these kinds of things. We know that when we grid, measure, and draw, we're using geometry. When teachers make sculptures, we're using engineering. When we mix colors, we reveal information about physics. When we create illustrations for stories, we learn about literature. When we review the styles of art, uh, from da Vinci to Bansky, we teach history. When we write about our art, we're strengthening our writing skills. When we create works of art, we solve complex visual problems in creative ways. Art is the meeting place for all subjects. We know that students who have art in high school tend to score about 100 points higher on their SATs. I asked my guidance department to track my students when I was teaching in New Jersey, and my students were succeeding about 150 to 155 points higher on their SATs than their peers. So this becomes a very powerful piece of evidence that art is important to the student succeeding in that school. And when the student succeeds, the school succeeds and receives more funding and it reflects back on the school in that way. So it's a win-win for everybody. Art can be a great means for a student to get a deeper grasp on their subjects and connections between courses. Research shows what I just told you, and there are many things on my blog at artedguru.com that will show you these specific um, research studies that show that art does this for students. Does this connectedness to math and science and history make projects any less artful or less expressive? No. There's definitely a, a level of depth that can be built upon uh, and that your colleagues are using that can be reinforced by the art teacher. More knowledge is always better. We already do this. It's making sure that these connections are more overt and that our students and ourselves are kind of learning more and applying that information into what it is we're teaching. But it can happen in a very natural sort of way. So it's not like taking away from your uh, teaching time. Does this also mean that crafts then don't have value because generally in a craft you're gonna have the same product? No, because crafts make connections to cultures and social studies and history. So it can be a, re uh, a really rich source of learning if we can make these uh, connections in meaningful ways by incorporating reading and writing skills and teaching about the cultures and the history of the crafts that we are exposing our children to. You can also incorporate personal things by using color. Like let's say we're going to be doing a weaving with yarn. Students can come up with a list of attributes and the colors that represent their attributes and those are the colors they use to do their weaving so that when it's done, they have a bit of their personality woven into the project. So there are ways of achieving uniqueness through the use of craft. So it's kind of this combination of art and craft um, and that pushes the understanding deeper with our students. So does that mean that everything is okay in the art room? Not exactly, because there are still thousands of classrooms across the country that are doing art that minimizes our profession and reinforce the idea that art is frivolous, expendable, and filler. Programs like this waste opportunities for learning and problem solving, and the hallmark of those kinds of departments are when they have cookie cutter projects. When students all come out with the same thing and 
the way you judge the work is how well it looks like the teacher example, you've kind of ruined all of these connections that can possibly be made. So it's important that uniqueness is built in so that there's gonna be problem solving and then connections to uh, core content. When projects line the hallway like little reproductions, um, I cringe when I see that work because I know that no matter how cute or how appreciated her lo how loved they might be, they come at the expense of our profession. Um, leave these little projects as filler for a sub. Uh, help them if you like, um, but such projects have you know no place in the art room. Um, I don't care if this child is tw 20 years old or two years old. Art must be personal, expressive, and connected. To those who say that cookie cutter projects build skills uh, to be used later on, my reply is that you need to do it now. Uh, while they're still under your professional direction, you can apply the techniques that I'm talking about in this particular series. It doesn't need to be dramatic or profound, but the element of student choice and connections to core work content must be present in all projects to be valid art experiences. So how about an example? So we've seen the project where uh, you know students are given a couple of paper plates, they staple them together, they make a little pie cut out of one side, take that little pie cut and put it on the other side and you've got a fish. And then they paint it, decorate it somehow. Um, that's very cookie cutter. But by playing around with this idea of how loud they are, how active they are and things like that, they could cut out a big mouth if they're loud, a little mouth if they're more shy, a big tail if they're very active, or a small tail if maybe they're a little bit more passive. So you're building it a little bit of choice. It isn't a lot, but it's certainly going to mean that they can then talk about their project. Well, why does it have a little mouth? Why does it have a big mouth? And then you will get this interesting kind of explanation for the students. You can add fins that represent activity and all these other kinds of things. You can keep it simple, but there are ways of building in that uniqueness into the projects that they're creating. How about those core connections with that fish? Well, before making the fish, you can talk about the different kinds of fish and organize them by their, their type. Uh, air breathing fish and water breathing, perhaps. Uh, you can talk about being loud or quiet or slow or fast or energetic or lazy and students can create a list. Uh, they can make a list of all the water animals they know of uh, for a few minutes and organize them by order. Uh, you can talk about vocabulary like vertebrates and invertebrates. You can speak with your colleagues to coordinate a little bit and they will respect you more and your students will have a more deep understanding and higher success rates in all of their subjects. And what about the Common Core? Um, I don't feel, I feel like Common Core is like this buzzword um, that incites a lot of division and I'm not a fan of tons of testing that can take up much time that we as teachers really need. Um, but I do believe that we need to have some national standards um, so that an A in New Jersey is an A in Mississippi or Washington State. Um, my approach is to create more overt connections to core content with vocabulary, writing, reading, interpretation, observation, recording, etc. When I do a unit on gridded portraits, we discuss scale. Uh, before we make art, we write about our ideas, creating lists, assimilating information, and include some expository writing. When we talk about da Vinci, we cover the Renaissance, the 1400s, and the history of that time. We may illustrate stories um, and talk about uh, the work, the author, the literature. My approach does all these things that Common Core is meant to do, but it goes beyond is, and is more successful. So though I'm required by my state to teach or follow Common Core, um, I do ha have this evidence that backs me up that my students are succeeding at higher rates than their peers. So, um, by taking all of this together, we can come up with lessons that are deep and connected, that they are personal, yet still helping our students succeed in all of their classes. And that's key to the school experience in a public school. If you found this to be helpful, please consider subscribing and checking out some of the other videos on this playlist. Thank you.